So what am I reading in November? Let's find out. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I am giving you my November TBR. These are the books that I am intending to read in the month of November. Those of you who've been with the channel for a while will know my TBRs aren't always that accurate. I am becoming a bit of a mood reader, so this will depend slightly, but there are some things I am definitely planning to get to, and there are others which might be a little bit more marginal. On this TBR, I have got nine books, which is slightly above average for what I normally get through in a month, but I want to be doing at least eight a month for the next two because that will get me to 100 books for the year. So that is why I am aiming for nine this month. So if I do get to all nine of them, I can have a slightly easier December with seven books to get to that magical 100 100 mark for books for the year, which will be by far the most books I've ever read in the year probably double my previous best so a very big reading year this year for me let's jump straight in with the books i'm intending to get to on audio so for those of you who've been following along you will know that i am currently most of the way through the memoirs of lady trent i am listening to book four the labyrinth of drakes at the moment and i should have it finished by the end of october meaning that i am leaving book five within the sanctuary of wings as my first audiobook listen, hopefully for November. I have been loving the memoirs of Lady Trent, particularly these books from sort of two onwards have just been absolutely brilliant. Really, really enjoying it, and I cannot wait to finish out this series. Although I will be a little bit sad to have got to the end of it because it has become a real favourite, considering that I didn't actually love book one that much. So, yeah, really loving this series. Looking forward to getting to book five and actually completing book four by the end of this month. As well as that, I recently finished Homeland, which is the first book of the Dark Elf trilogy by R.A. Salvatore. It was a lot more fun than I expected. I thought that I might find it a bit too old school for me and it wouldn't be that interesting, but actually a really, really fun read. And I am hopefully getting both to Exile, book two, and Sojourn, book three. Um, within the month of November. So these are books I already own on audiobook and I am really, really hoping to get to and get through and enjoy. So I'm going to sort of sprinkle these in with the memoirs of Lady Trent going one for one um, consecutively on them and hopefully I will enjoy the rest of this series as much as I did the first book in this series which was a surprisingly good read for me definitely something i enjoyed um, definitely something i am very interested to continue on with the next book i'm going to be getting to on audio is salute the dark this is book four in shadows of the apt by adrian tchaikovsky this is for the read along on alan's channel he has been reading the first four books of the shadows of the apt one per month and I have been keeping up with that and that means Salute the Dark is this month for the end of that first sort of four book arc that we're doing as a Discord with Alan and it has been really good fun. And I really liked Blood of the Mantis book three last month. It was a good book. It was the best written, I think, of all the books that I've read so far in the series. However, the plot for me was a little bit less engaging. Those two things together combined led it to another four star read like the previous two books in the series. Not an all-time favourite, but I do think that you can see Tchaikovsky's writing improving throughout this debut series of his. As we go through it, it's written better and better. The character work, in my opinion, is much, much better as we go, but the plot wasn't quite as gripping for me, and I'm hoping that a lot of the setup we got in Blood of the Mantis will be resolved satisfactorily in Salute the Dark. And then the final audiobook I want to be getting to in November is to continue my Dresden Files reread. I didn't read any Dresden Files at all in October, but in August and September I got through quite a lot of the early books and I am planning to get to book seven, Deadbeat, during the month of November. Deadbeat is a brilliant book. I can tell you this because I have read it many, many times before. It is really for a lot of Dresden fans where the Dresden Files really kicks into gear is where we first got a hardback release of it and it is just a really, really great book. I remember reading this for the first time and it has so many twists and turns. It's just such a wonderful ride and I cannot wait to get back into it and to just enjoy it. Just enjoy it so much. It's gonna be such a good time to reread that and I imagine I will blast through it in a few days. Dresden Files, if you've not read it, please give it a go. It's so much fun. 
but I do want to continue my reread of the Dresden Files this month with Dead Beat. Now before we get onto the books I want to read physically this month, if you are enjoying this video, if you like knowing what I'm going to be reading next month, do click that like button so more people can see this video. So on to books I want to read physically this month. By the end of this month I should have finished An Echo of Things to Come by James Islington and I am trying to decide whether or not I jump straight into The Light of All That Falls, book three of the Lycanius trilogy. I think I might give it a little bit of a gap because I found it quite slow going through An Echo of Things to Come so this might be a December read instead. Um, so what I am planning to read in November is starting off with Rebel's Creed by Daniel Green. I read Breach of Peace, the first novella in this series when it first came out, and actually I enjoyed it. I thought it was written relatively well. I actually gave it four stars, which for a novella is pretty good going. Definitely something that was enjoyable and definitely had me interested enough to pick up Rebel's Creed. It should be arriving through my door in the next couple of days, and it will be one of the earlier reads that I get to in November. Rebel's Creed is a follow-up to Breach of Peace set in the same world. It's quite a dark, horror-filled fantasy world. It's definitely got a flintlock um, element to it. It's a more technologically advanced world than we often see in fantasy. Last time in Breach of Peace we were following a police force who essentially get their authority from the god of this world, so sort of god's police force essentially. I will be interested to see where we go in Rebel's Creed, what characters we will be following, and how the plot and the world is going to evolve. So very interested to jump into Rebel's Creed when it comes through my door. As well as that, I am really wanting to get back into one of my favorite authors, and that is Daniel Abraham. You can see the Long Price Quartet behind me, and I adore that series, and I really want to get into The Dagger and Coin. Now, this is a series that I've been sort of putting off for a little while. It's something I really do want to get into. I trust Daniel Abraham so much, and I've not read any of these yet. So I want to read The Dragon's Path, which is book one. As well as that, if I can, if I've got time to get to it, I really want to get to The King's Blood. I do believe that this is a fantasy series that is more standard medieval fantasy setting, but it is really exploring the intricacies of military versus economy and how these two things work together in both politics and in war. This is a series I have been putting off for far too long and I will definitely be getting to The Dragon's Path. Hopefully I will also be reading The King's Blood, but we will see how we go on that. And then the final book on my TBR for November is another physical read I want to do. And this is a read that has been something that I've been considering for a long time and I've never quite got to. Now, I know there are a lot of Stephen King fans on my little corner of BookTube. Those people I interact with, I know lots of them love Stephen King, have read so, so many of his books. I am a little bit ashamed to say I have never read a Stephen King book in my life. Now, I know that's a bit shocking um, to admit, but I've never read any Stephen King books in my life. But the ones that really grip me, the ideas that grab me are his Dark Tower series. And recently having heard Michael Nip talk about The Gunslinger, I knew I needed to pick it up and give it a go. So right here, Gunslinger by Stephen King is the final book I want to be reading physically jaw in the month of November. It is a nice thin one, which is good for me. It means I will hopefully get to it and get through it. Um, and I cannot wait to see my opinions on this. I cannot wait to see how Stephen King's writing goes for me. I know he's very much a pantser in terms of writing style. He is a discovery writer. And I know that often that leads to books where they have a great journey, um, but people don't always love the ends. Um, whereas I often enjoy much more structured outliners as authors. You know I love Brandon Sanderson, Robert Jordan, all these guys who have an outline and a plan and they know where they're going. Um, so I'll be interested to read this book from someone who is much more a discovery writer, a gardener, as George R. R. Martin would say. And hopefully I will love Gunslinger enough that I am dragged into this Dark Tower world and dragged into the world of Stephen King kicking and screaming. Thank you so much for sticking with me, guys. I hope that's been interesting. Let me know down below what you are planning to read in the month of November.